Okay, I'm going to be going over a list of different books that have helped me tremendously. I've been a dog trainer for over a decade now. I've been working with dogs for a very long time in different areas from pet obedience to service dogs to training protection dogs and doing sport work in the areas of protection training as well. So in general, you know, I did go to a couple of different dog training schools. I got a lot of firsthand information like that, but I also... Uh, I love to read, and I've been reading books on dog training for a while now, and I'm going to be giving you a breakdown of a bunch of books that I've found to be the most valuable in my career, the most informational. These are the books that I recommend to people, and I think I'm really going to help you out. So let's get right into it. So the first category of the first list of books, uh, one category is, you know, this is fundamental stuff, so very, very not basic necessarily in nature, but mostly, um, you know, this these books are going to address the the uh, the why, not so much the how to. These books are not mechanical in nature. These books are not going to tell you how to teach a dog to sit, or they're not going to help you teach a super fast recall necessarily. They're not going to give you the steps, but they're going to be addressing. Um, you know, why dogs do certain things, why they don't do certain things, how to teach them to be more motivated and maybe how to address the more, um, you know, maybe the more emotional uh, aspects of, uh, or of association and, and things like that. So let's get right into it. One of the books that I find uh, very, very informative is How Dogs Learn. How Dogs Learn by Birch and Bailey. This book is a little bit on the complex side to read, but here are the contents of the book, right? It goes into the history of animal training, the basic principles of behavior, uh, behavioral diagnostics, increasing behavior techniques, decreasing behavior techniques. It goes into the quadrants. It goes into classical conditioning. It just covers a lot of good information, a lot of good content that... Um, you know, that I, I firmly believe every dog trainer should know. I think one of the things that we lack a lot in the dog training industry is we think too much about uh, techniques and we don't think so much about why, why those techniques work, why they don't work at times. Next book is Accelerate Learning. That's another book by Pamela uh, Reed. This book is very similar to How Dogs Learn, but I have found that it's easier to read. So How Dogs Learn is going to take a little bit of time. Um, what I did when I first read this book, the very first time I read it, is I kept stopping and, and doing some additional research to kind of understand and keep up with the book. Accelerated Learning is a little bit easier to digest. It's almost written in layman's terms, so to speak. Uh, very similar format than, uh, to How Dogs Learn, but a little bit different in, uh, in nature. Uh, another book that I think is really good is called Coaching People to Train Their Dogs by Terry Ryan. This is a big, hefty book. So this book is not going to take you just a couple of hours to read. I think even if you're a speed reader, I think this book will take you a little bit of extra time. I have a, a, a whole video specifically on this book on my YouTube channel, um, but this book is going to cover a lot of basic stuff from you know, and I say basic loosely, I'm not saying that it's just too basic, but basic stuff from the quadrants, um, you know, ethology, um, classical conditioning, operant conditioning, all the way to the science of learning, husbandry, how to run the business, the people skills side of, side of things, and, uh, and some behavior modification techniques. Now, this book, Coaching People to Train Their Dogs, is a little bit biased uh, towards a certain type of training technique. But once you read past that, it's actually a very informational book. Another book that I really, really like is this one, Dog Language, an Encyclopedia of Canine Behavior by Roger Abrantes. This is one of my favorite, all-time favorite books in the area of dog training. What this book does, again, this book, just like I mentioned in the section above, this book does not tell you how to teach a dog to sit or how to teach a dog to do a recall necessarily, but this book is written in uh, dictionary encyclopedia format. So it contains a total of 
I counted 308 topics. So it's got over 300 topics that Roger covers in this book in alphabetical order. So you don't have to read this in a linear format. It's actually meant to be read. Um, you can read it in a linear format, so from cover to cover, but it's meant to be used as a reference guide where you could go to any topic in alphabetical um, order, I suppose, and go, you know, today I feel like talking about uh, anxiety, and you could look up anxiety or, or look up aggression. Uh, maybe today I need to look up, um, uh, you know, false pregnancy, and there's a whole section there on false pregnancies. Uh, there is graphics. There is um, there is a lot of illustrations that go along with the book. A lot of uh, you know good image images in the book that I think are also very very helpful. So Dog Language and Encyclopedia of Canine Behavior by Roger Brantes is an excellent book. I think every dog trainer should uh, should read this book or have it as a reference at least. Now the next category is going to be the mechanics. So the mechanics of dog training so to speak so the couple of books that i'm going to be mentioning here are, uh, are are books that i have found very very helpful in that these do they do go into the mechanics they do go into the how to uh they do you know give you techniques on how to teach a dog to sit how to teach the dog uh a, you know to do a recall so whereas the previous books were more uh, you know more broad more scientific um, and more uh, of the of the why this book this list of books is more on the how to. So one book right here is Dog Training with a Touch by Tom Rose and Anita Cheek. So this book is an excellent excellent book. I really really like this book. I'm not gonna talk about Tom Rose and the Dog Training School. Um, you know that's a different topic for a different time. I do have a, a section on Dog Training Schools in my book. And in one of my videos on YouTube and my blog, but um, not what this list is about. This list is about this specific book. Um, it has a lot of techniques. So I'll give you a brief rundown of, of the contents in the book. It's got selecting a working dog, training your puppy, tracking, obedience. So in obedience, it goes from you know teaching the dog to sit, teaching the dog to down, how to do the recall. Uh, it goes into the helper, meaning the decoy, protection work, and uh, and a bunch of other good stuff. So this is also this also can be read cover to cover in a linear format, but it's also a good reference guide in that there have been many times where I've gone back to this book to brush up on a couple of things, and I don't need to read it from the beginning. I don't need to read the previous chapter. I can pick out a section, like for instance, protection training. This is something I do a lot of. And I can go to protection training. And within protection training, there is like a section on how to increase the grip. So I can go directly to that section and brush up and get a couple of tips on how to increase the grip or how to improve the grip. So really good as a, as a, a reference guide as well where I can pick it up at any time and, and go to a, a designated section and help me out that way. Another book that I really like is Shuts and Obedience by Godfrey Del Dai and Sheila Booth. Um, this is also a, a how-to guide. It has a lot of techniques on how to do this and how to do that. It goes over compulsion, uh, happy healing, uh, the sit, the front, the recall, the you know the the send out. So basically, exercises for Shutson routines. Um, now IGP, but even though it is a, a sports-specific book. This is an excellent book, really across all sports and really even for pet obedience. I actually read this book before I even got into sport training. I uh, first time I read this book, I was I was in Afghanistan. I had read a bunch of books there because I was working with the working dogs, and I was interested in this book because I wanted to see the happy healing. I wanted to see the happy, the you know the happy obedience versus. The techniques that were taught a lot of times happen to be a lot of compulsion based. This book was excellent, excellent resource. So even though it says shuts and obedience, that's the title. Don't be fooled by that. Don't limit yourself to, well, it's a shuts and book, so I don't need it. This is an excellent, excellent book. Uh, next book on my list is The Killer Method of Dog Training. This is a book series in general. So I, I'm, I'm going to make this a little bit lengthy. Um, the, this book series goes from uh, open obedience 
uh, for AKC obedience all the way to, um, you know, guard dog training. And the book itself, uh, it, it's a little bit of a controversial topic. I do like the book. It's got some really solid information, but it's got also some information that is very, very outdated. And at the time, this was very acceptable. This, this book was written in the 60s or 70s. And at the time, it was very acceptable to, you know, to use the techniques laid out in the book. But today, we're, we're just, we don't train like that. You know, training has evolved. Uh, and even though there are trainers to this day that, that swear by this, and, and it's very religious, it's like a movement. They, they're called, they call themselves the killer uh, method of dog training, you know, the, the killer trainers. And um, nothing against them. Uh, the book does have some solid information, so it makes sense to me why some people really uh, hang on to it. But there are there are some th sections in the book that undeniably you just cannot look at and say this is solid information today. So just to give you a, a, a piece on there, you know, it says this is directly from the book and it's, uh, you know, on how to address destructive chewing. And yes, he does say you should make sure your dog doesn't have a, a mineral deficiency, a dietary deficiency. But once we've addressed all of that, here is directly from the book, quote, select a piece of material he has chewed and you needn't catch him in the act. So you don't need to catch him in the act. Place it well back crossways in his mouth. Then use a strip of adhesive tape to wrap the muzzle securely in front of the chewed material so that no amount of gagging and clawing can force it out of its mouth or from its mouth. End of quote. So in this little section right here, it's basically telling you if your dog chews some furniture, get a piece of wood, tie it all the way inside the dog's mouth, and actually tie it to your dog's mouth for a period of time. So the experience is so disgusting that the dog has no desire to ever put his mouth on, on furniture. Now, this may have been acceptable at, a time, at one time, but as you can see, this is just completely repulsive to even think about doing you know like no person who considers themselves a dog trainer or even a dog lover should ever consider doing something like this to a dog where now we have much uh, better approaches to deal with this and the book has a bunch of little pieces of information like this similar to this throughout the book and my suggestion is when you read this book um, when you find those follow your gut feeling go but this doesn't sound right and just move past it and move on to the very good information. So I debated putting this book on the list, but you know, there's such good information that I really feel like uh, you can go get some good use out of it. You just have to read past those certain sections that, uh, you know, have no place in training today. Um, you know, in my opinion, all right, more on, uh, you know, on different books, different moving on to the list. We have specialties. So specialties, this is more, this is beyond your basics. All right, so one right here is Tritronics Retriever Handbook, or the Tritronics Retriever Training Book. This is by Jim and Phyllis Dobbs with Alice Woodyard. And this specific book goes into remote collar training. Now, you don't have to be in e-collar training. You can actually hate e-collars and think to yourself, I'm never, ever using an e-collar. I hate them. Not, never going to shock a dog whichever way you feel about this, but if you happen to be interested in learning about e-collar training, I feel like this is a nice, solid introduction to it. Uh, it lays out the low working level, scape conditioning type of training that a lot of trainers use today. Um, you know, it's one approach, there are different approaches. Obviously, there's different ways to condition the dog to the remote collar. This one is very comprehensive in one particular approach that I, I use, um, you know, one of the approaches that I do use and one of the approaches that I feel is fairly easy to grasp even for beginners. And obviously the book also, because it is a retrieving book, retriever training book, it does go into field work and water work and, you know, and uh, retrieving uh, and, and all of that, right? So gunfire, all of that. But the first third of the book covers obedience and conditioning the e-collar. So excellent book for that. If you are a dog trainer that is going to be doing any e-collar work, I think that this is definitely a must. 
Next book is going to be on my list is going to be Dirt Shutson, The Protection Dog by Helmut Reiser. This is translated by Armin Winkler. And this book was ori originally written in, uh, you know, in, in German several years ago, like a very, very long time ago. Um, I can't think right off the top of my head the actual print of the original, but I know it was um, it was quite a while ago. The the book itself does have a lot of good information on again Shutson, so uh, IGP now, which is very sport specific, but it is um, you know it's more towards the protection side. So even though this is Shutson. Again, I strongly believe just by reading the material, it's not just shuts on. It's, it's actually across different sports you could use this information. If you do protection training, police work training, um, if you dabble into other protection sports, this book has some good foundational um, information on here. It goes into the drives. It goes into the helper work. So if this is something you're going to be doing, if you're going to be doing some decoy work, this is a good book to, you know, to get you on the right track. So really, 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 really good book. All right, next book on my list. Uh, I just have got to have this book on the list because it's an excellent book. It's Controlled Aggression by Jerry Bradshaw. Um, this is a super comprehensive book. It's uh, it's pretty big. You know, um, Hel uh, Helmut Reiser's book, Der Schutz, and the previous one that I just mentioned is very small. Controlled Aggression has a lot more content in it. And very similar to Der Schutz, it also covers the different drives, the selection process, uh, teaching some techniques, and it goes into a lot of detail. It goes into operant conditioning. It goes into some of the classical conditioning. So it also goes into a little bit of the why, but it also covers a lot of the how-to, um, equipment, um, decoy work, um, just very, very thorough. I read this book a couple of times already. And again, another good reference guide. I can go back to it and pick up, uh, you know, on a couple of things that I want extra attention on. Just excellent book. I, I really feel I'm not just saying this because I know the guy and and I think he's an excellent speaker, but this book is actually super super solid. If you do any sort of protection training, whether it's sport work, police work, personal protection, if you're going to be doing any decoy work, this book has a lot of good solid information. All right, last section is on client relations. So the next two books are actually not dog training related. They're not about dog training at all. But I feel a lot of dog trainers, I would, you know, if I had to put a number to it, I'd say over half of dog trainers out there do not understand client relations. They don't understand people. And so a lot of people, this is a running joke in the dog training industry, a lot of people become dog trainers because they don't like dealing with people. And the thing is, you're going to work with dogs, you're going to be working with people. I've read a bunch of books. This is a topic that actually interests me and captivates me quite a bit. I've read so many books, uh, just as many, if not maybe even more, on the subject of uh, personal development, human relations, than I've read books on the topic of dog training. So I've read a bunch, and a lot of books have very similar information. There's a lot of overlaps um, there are two books on the areas of client relations and, and human relations that I feel are the best out of all the ones I've read. Uh, you know, these two are the ones that are going to help you work with people the best, in my opinion. First book on the list is in this category is going to be Sell or Be Sold. This is a book by Grant Cardone. Uh, Grant Cardone is a huge, huge figure in the sales world. Across the world, he has programs on sales. He's got books, audios, and all kinds of material on sales. The guy built his whole reputation, his whole career, became a, one of the biggest business people in the world because of sales. So this guy definitely has some good information. So The Bookseller Be Sold is actually not a uh, pushy salesman type of book. There is no manipulative techniques on here. The whole book actually revolves around how the sales process is actually a, it, it's all about people, the, the, the exchange of currency, the exchange of goods that takes place in sales is not about the exchange of goods itself, it's actually about a people uh, transaction. It, it's 
It's you are basically selling yourself. You're not selling your product. That's the whole theme of the book is not sales techniques as much as it is. Listen, you need to understand that when you're selling a product, you really are selling yourself. So excellent, excellent book. A lot of eye openers, a lot of uh, aha moments that I had when uh, when I went over this book. Uh, last but not least, this book is probably one of my favorite, all-time favorite books. I have a few books that are all-time favorites. This right here is one of them. This is called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This book is just unbelievable. The very first time I read this book, um, I just had aha moments like in every single chapter. Uh, the book is just excellent. I absolutely recommend this book. There's just no reason to justify a poor, um, you know, a, a poor client interaction. There's just no reason to justify you saying, "Oh, I'm just not good with people." You can't use this as an excuse when you have books like this available. Uh, out of all the books that I've read, I think this one, in in the area of human relations, this one probably covers the most, goes the most in depth on how to do that properly. It just really helps you understand people. Very similar to the books on why dogs do certain things, this book this book goes into why people behave certain ways when interacting with you, and how to you know how to get the most out of every person interaction, different, uh, you know, different conflicts, different scenarios. There's a lot of anecdotes, even letters, which makes the book very easy to read. Just, this is, this is just an excellent book. Even though this is not a dog training book per se, this is probably the most important dog training book that you will ever, ever read. So strongly recommend it. All these books right here, I've read a bunch more, um, but I think out of all of the ones I've read, the list I just gave you, it is a very, very 